This is Concept 2 Notes on Acceleration. And make sure you've gotten your Concept 1 notes before starting this one because those are definitely a prerequisite to understanding acceleration. So what is acceleration? First, it's another way to measure or describe the motion of an object. So acceleration, which would be abbreviated as a little a in an equation, is the rate of change of velocity over time. So we're looking at how is an object's velocity changing? And if you remember from our last concept, velocity is speed and direction. So either the object's speed can be changing or its direction can be changing and the object is considered to be accelerating. So that means it could be speeding up, it could be slowing down, or changing direction, and that would make it accelerating. If, um, oh, and it would be measured in um, a speed unit basically squared. So miles per hour squared, meters per second squared, kilometers per hour squared, that kind of thing. A positive acceleration would mean that your object is speeding up, it's getting faster, and then if you end up with a negative acceleration, that's totally okay. That just means the object is slowing down. A equals VF minus VI over T. So final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. That's how we're going to calculate acceleration. So, an example, a car traveling 35 kilometers per hour accelerates to a speed of 45 kilometers per hour in 0.25 hours. What is its acceleration? Well, initially it's going 35 kilometers per hour. It's going to get to, so its final velocity, 45 kilometers per hour. And it's going to do this in 0.25 hours, that's my time. What am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for acceleration. My equation is simple, and what I have isolated, uh, or I'm looking for, is already isolated, so I can go ahead and jump in and plug in. Now, order of operations, do your parentheses first. 45 minus 35 is 10, and then do your 10 divided by 0.25, and you get 40. And again, your unit is basically your velocity unit, but you just put a little square on the time part. So 40 kilometers per hour squared. Another example. A jet is traveling at 80 meters per second when it starts to approach a runway. It is able to land and park in 10 seconds. What is its acceleration? Well, its initial speed or initial velocity it's going is 80 meters per second. When it approaches a runway, it lands and parks. When, you, well, when you're in park, your final velocity, that means you're not moving, so 0 meters per second. It does this in a time of 10 seconds. And again, we're looking for acceleration. So same equation but your VF is 0, and minus your VI, which is 80, divided by 10. Well, 0 minus 80 is negative 80, and that is okay. Negative 80 divided by 10 gives me negative 8. And again, it's meters per second squared, because my velocity unit was meters per second. Now, this negative acceleration makes sense, because the jet is slowing down when it comes to a stop. And we said on a um, couple of slides prior that a negative acceleration means the object is slowing down. So don't get scared if you get a negative acceleration. Just think, is my object slowing down? And if it is, you did the right thing, so that's good. All right, this next example is a little bit more challenging. This would probably be more like a bonus or challenge problem for a non-honors class. Definitely a requirement, though, for the honors students. A skateboarder has an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. Starting from rest, if he accelerates for two seconds, what speed will he reach? Okay, what do we know and what are we looking for? That's where we always start on these problems. Well, we know acceleration is 1.5 meters per second squared. If he's starting from rest, that means his initial velocity is zero. Two seconds is a measurement of time. And then what speed will he reach? Well, we're looking then for a final velocity. Now, here's my equation, but I can't use it as is because what I'm looking for is not isolated. So we're going to have to rearrange. And if you watch the concept one notes, you know the first thing you should always do is get it out of a fraction. And how do we get it out of a fraction? We do that by multiplying by the denominator, which is time. So if I multiply both sides by time, those will cancel out. Rewriting this, that's a times t equals vf minus vi, or t times a equals vf minus vi. Now, I still want vf by itself, so I need to get rid of this minus vi. So I need to do the opposite of subtracting. So currently I'm subtracting, now I need to add. 
So I'm going to add VI on both sides. That will allow those to cancel out. And it gives me AT plus VI equals my VF. And now I'm ready to work. So just flipping how I wrote that, VF equals AT plus VI. Now I can plug in. So that's my A was 1.5 and my time was 2 plus my VI, which was 0. Do your multiplication first according to order of operations. 1.5 plus times 2 is 3. And then you're going to add 0. So your final velocity is 3 meters per second. And you can always check to make sure you did it right by plugging in these values into the original equation and seeing if you get that 1.5. So I would love for you to pause now and practice some of these problems. And then when you're ready, plus, press play again and you'll get to see the answers. Last thing, and we did this with describing motion, is um, graphing. Graphing acceleration is a way of visually helping us understand an object's motion. So another refresher, remember slope is the steepness of a line, and we calculate it as your change in y over your change in x. So your rise over your run. Now, if you notice on a graph like this one, this is a velocity versus time graph. So y divided by x would be velocity divided by time, which, hmm, we just learned something that is equal to velocity divided by time. So on a velocity versus time graph, your slope is actually the acceleration of the object. So let's put this into practice. What does that mean? All right, well, looking at this first graph, there's no slope to this line. It has zero steepness, thus it has zero acceleration. Now, the other thing we notice is its velocity is zero, at zero, at one second, at two, at three, at four, at five, at six. So what do I know about this object? I know it's not moving. It has zero acceleration, but it's not just not accelerating, it's literally not moving. Looking at this one, again, straight line, no slope, no speed, so there's no acceleration, but Notice the velocity is 5 at 1 second, 2 second, 3 second, 4, etc. So this object is moving, it's just moving at a constant speed. Has no acceleration because again, no steepness. This line has a positive slope, it's going up. You can see the velocity is increasing 2 meters per second, and then 4, and then 6, and then 8, and then 10, and then 12. So this would show an object that's speeding up and has a positive acceleration. Here we see 12 and then 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. So this would be an object that's slowing down, so it has a negative acceleration. Now, now that we know what acceleration is, we can also determine acceleration from a distance versus time graph. But it's so important, y'all, when you're doing these, that you reorient your mind about what you're thinking of. So now that we're looking at a distance versus time graph, the slope tells me the speed. All right, so this very first one, no slope, thus no speed on this distance versus time graph. So this is an object not moving on a distance versus time graph, thus it has no acceleration. This has a slope, a positive slope, but it's a straight line, so the slope isn't changing. So this would be an object to have at a constant speed, thus it still has no acceleration. Here, the line is getting steeper, thus the speed is changing, it's speeding up, thus this one has a positive acceleration. And then here, the line is getting flatter, so it's slowing down, thus has a negative acceleration. Now these graphs can be really tricky, but they can also be really helpful for understanding objects' motion, so we are definitely going to spend some time practicing this.